Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. It's 2024, and I want to start a new series here on YouTube talking about what sound engineers need to know about acoustics. In this series, I want to talk about the more controversial and underappreciated facts about acoustic treatment that are crucial for you to know in order to make this whole process a success and actually get your rooms to translate. And in this first video in this series, I want to talk about why acoustic treatment is not actually about getting good sound. It might be obvious, it may not be, but before I get into that, I just want to help you out with my home studio treatment framework, which you can download for free at the link in the description. These are my five steps to treating a room and getting it to translate. This is the same process that I walk my students through. This is the same process that I use when I treat rooms. It's all in there. So setting up your desk and speakers, planning the treatment, using subwoofers, measurements, speaker decoupling, and a lot more. And it's all nicely laid out for you so you know what to focus on and what to ignore. And so that you really know that you are on the right track throughout this entire process. So again, if you need help understanding what to do in order to treat your room, make sure to download my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description. But so now, what do I mean when I say acoustic treatment isn't about getting good sound? Well, obviously, from a technical perspective, acoustic treatment is about getting good sound, but that shouldn't be the ultimate goal for you. And that's the important point here. Because if you're a sound engineer, the goal should be to be able to trust what you're hearing from your speakers, right? In order to primarily make better decisions, trust in your decisions, so that you can work faster and actually get the music done that you're working on. That's the goal here. The sound, the good sound, is just a step in that process in order to enable that to happen. And that's why I want you to make that the goal, the metric that you're looking for, that you're aiming for when you're actually treating your room in order to make this whole process a success. Now, this might be a complete no-brainer to you, but why am I focusing on that in this first video? And the reason is that it's so easy to get hung up on technical details while you're going through this. It usually takes some time to treat your room. There are a lot of different aspects to focus on, to think about, to plan into this whole process. And it's really easy to forget why you're doing all of this in the first place and then start chasing things that really don't get you there or just have you turning in circles. For example, maybe you've been down this rabbit hole as well, chasing a flat frequency response or certain reverb times. Yeah, the last time I came across this was just a few days ago when somebody posted in a Facebook group that they had treated their rooms following my process and were actually really successful doing so with all the measurements that he'd shown. But he got hung up on these two little dips in the frequency response, trying just about anything to figure out how to make these go away. When in all likelihood, it probably was the right point to wrap up this whole acoustic treatment thing and just get back to actually working on the music and learning the speakers, learning the room, and getting back into the flow of things. It was just a perfect example of what happens when in the process of treating your room, you end up chasing your tail, trying to get good sound, instead of actually focusing on what you set out initially to do, which was to get into a situation where you could trust your speakers and make proper decisions from what you're hearing. The problem is that if you focus on these technical details so much, that whole process probably never ends or at least drags out for a very, very long time. And like I said, you it's kind of the perfect recipe for you to end up chasing your own tail. One of the reasons is that there is no clear definition of what a good sound is, right? So if you look at all the, the technical metrics out there, at what point are you done? At what point can you consider to have achieved good sound. It's not clearly defined. And so obviously, if the goal isn't clearly set, if it's a moving goalpost, how are you going to reach that goal? And then with the reality of what it takes to treat a home studio, to treat a room that was never meant 
for the purpose of critical listening, if you will, some of these goals might not be achievable at all, or at least with certain kind of compromises that you're just not willing to make in practice. So that's why I want you to make sure that if you are going on this journey of treating your studio, you've got the right goal in mind. Are you really clear about why you're doing this whole thing? Because merely wanting a good sound, unfortunately, isn't going to give you what you want. But do you agree or disagree with this? And what other things have you learned in the process of getting your room to translate that you wish you had known before? Please let me know in the comments below. But let's try and keep things civil and remember to help each other out. Yeah, this is a confusing topic. Yeah, we're all in this together. And remember, it's just acoustics. Nobody's life or social status depends on any of this. So with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.